Hello, I'm Neil Quigley and welcome to the latest episode in my podcast, which is basically a radio show on the internet with no music, featuring stories and old interviews that I've done. This week, find out what I did that was embarrassing and was captured on national television. Also find out which famous person once opened a bottle of beer for me. And hear an old interview I did with the great actress that is Sarah Parrish. All on the way this week, enjoy. Now, we do live in a very busy world. We're always rushing around from one thing to another. There doesn't seem to be time to do everything. And there does seem to be a lot of do's, a lot of events nowadays, parties, drinks, meals to get along to. And with the long hours we work, it's not always that easy to get along to them. I found the solution. I can't believe it took me so long to work out. I was inspired by all these TV award ceremonies where often the people receiving the awards or the people nominated, they're not there. They can't make it. They're either over the other side of the world or they're just the other side of the country and for whatever reason can't get to the venue the awards are taking place. I was invited to a friend of mine's child's first birthday party. Now unfortunately I couldn't go, I was working but inspired by these TV award shows I thought I know what I do, the next best thing, check my ego, the next best thing for me not being there is for me to send a video message wishing them happy birthday, apologising for not being at the party. So I did Just that, recorded on my mobile phone, about a 30 second quick video message, which then I sent to this child's mother just before the party was due to take place. I mean, in my head, I think I was envisaging maybe they'd get out a projector, plug the phone in and play out my video message to everyone there at the party. Realistically, I'm not even sure if they showed the video message to the person that it was made for, but it has given me a great idea. Now, every time I can't make it to any family or friends event, I'm just going to send along one of those videos. It's going to be brilliant. Save me so much time and money. What is the most embarrassing thing you've been caught doing when you didn't realise anyone was watching? I probably should have realised somebody might have been watching when I got caught out doing this. I once got caught dancing to Little Mix, which is nothing to be ashamed at, really. I think Little Mix are a great band. They do some great records. They put on a great show. Maybe, though, as a man in my early 40s, it's not the sort of thing I should really get caught dancing to. And it happened on quite a big stage as well. I was lucky enough the other year to go and see in the studio an episode of Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway, which for me is the premier Saturday night entertainment show of the year. It's brilliant. Love it. Think it's fantastic. Think Anton Deck are brilliant. It was lots of fun going along to the recording. As you can imagine, it's a big party atmosphere. There's laughs. There's all the set pieces. You get all the stuff you get to see on TV and you get all the sort of behind the scenes bits, the in-between bits as well, which just make it even better and even more fun. Little Mix were the guests on the end of the show show and right at the end of the show, they did kind of a country and western version of their song Black Magic, which I love that song anyway. I am a country music fan, so the two things combined, well, I couldn't help myself. And I wasn't alone, to be fair. At the end of the show, everybody is up dancing, the whole audience, and, you know, I'm giving it some to Little Mix. I'm absolutely loving it. What I kind of forgot for a minute, of course, is that TV show goes out live on a Saturday night all over the country. So there I am, merrily, happily dancing away to Black Magic from Little Mix, having a great old time, really loving it, forgetting that there was a chance I might be caught on camera. I was. If you saw the show, you would have been able to see me dancing away in the background to Little Mix on national TV, prime time on a Saturday night. That is just a little bit embarrassing. That is definitely being caught doing something that maybe you didn't want to be caught doing, certainly in front of the whole nation. I don't care, though. I enjoyed it. And if push comes to shove, I'd do exactly the same again. Neil Quigley. Now, it's always good doing things for charity. It makes you feel better about yourself. It does help out the charity. And normally, they're lots of fun. A few years ago, i done a great event for the Ian Rennie Hospice at Home. The Chilterns three peaks challenge have you heard of that it's lots of fun it's basically an 18 mile charity walk that can be done with children invited on it adults you can bring your dog along it's just a very social affair and you go up three peaks across the Chilterns. so you go up white eve cross coombe hill and you finish up ivanhoe beacon some 18 miles later the event actually started at my old school princess risborough upper school so that kind of felt quite weird going back there to start it off and very kindly 
The man who came to start things off and set us all off on our way was Bill Turnbull, the BBC breakfast presenter, who was lovely. Managed to get a quick chat to him. Somehow, our chat turned very quickly to beekeeping. He is a beekeeper and he's a big fan of trying to preserve the honeybees. We had a bit of a chat about that, which was fascinating. He certainly knows his stuff. Then he sent us on our way and we headed off on the walk. It was lots of fun. We all rush around far too much nowadays. We're all just heading to the next thing, getting to work, getting home, getting the next job done. We don't always appreciate the fantastic countryside that we have around us in this area. We're very, very lucky. And it was just a nice chance on a Sunday to relax, to take in the atmosphere and drink it up. And you do go past some spectacular scenery and sights if you head that 80 mile walk. In fact, part of the walk does actually take you right past the gardens of Chequers, the Prime Minister's weekend residence. And a few people actually said they bumped into the then Prime Minister, David Cameron. He happened to be out by his garden as a few people walking past there. So he did actually stop and have a chat to a few. I wasn't lucky enough to see him. I think he'd already gone before I got there. You know, I was pacing myself, taking my time. But it was a truly great event. And I thought, oh, I'd go running quite a bit. I'm relatively fit. 18 mile walk, no problem at all. I'm not gonna lie to you, the last couple of miles of that were a lot harder than I thought. And walking the next couple of days was a lot trickier than I anticipated as well. I did celebrate in Starlo. I came home, had a nice soak in the bath and a lovely bottle of red wine. But if you hear of the Children's Three Peaks Challenge when it comes around and next year, it's an annual event. I would recommend if you fancy it, do it. It's a lot of fun organized very nicely a lot of local companies and businesses get involved and help out and you will have a great time and raise some money for a very good cause i've been lucky enough now to see bruce springsteen and the e street band twice once many years ago at crystal palace the first time i'd really kind of properly heard of bruce my mate had a spare ticket and asked if i wanted to go along i went along it was an amazing concert he was brilliant so Ever since that moment, I've been a massive fan. So when a few years ago, he was coming back to Hyde Park, the headline there, definitely had to get along. So made sure I got myself some tickets. And the lineup was great, actually. You had John Fogerty. He was there performing before from the Credence Clearwater Revival Band, did all their big hits. He was fantastic. And also Lady Antebellum were on the bill as well. They were fantastic too. So it was a good night, even before Bruce came on. Bruce and the E Street Band, if you've not seen them, they musically are one of the best bands you could ever hear. So together, so tight, so on it, so brilliantly led by Bruce, and they just play forever. Their concerts are always three, four, five. Basically, they'll just keep playing until they get kicked off stage, more or less is the rule, which sadly is kind of what happened at this event. Enjoyed the concert massively. It was getting towards the end. You could tell that and you thought, well, it's encore time now. And you could tell if you've been to enough concerts, you know when the band have done their last one and they're going to rock into the encore. So we got to that stage and just before they did the encore, I spotted what looked like a shadow of a figure just at the side of the stage. And I thought, that guy looks a little bit familiar. As that was happening, Bruce on stage was introducing, please welcome to the stage, my special guest, Sir Paul McCartney, which at the time was brilliant. I had been desperate to see a real life Beatle live, hadn't got around to it, and here I was watching the fantastic Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, and they bring out Sir Paul McCartney. Great cheers, the place goes crazy, and then they go straight into, I saw her standing there. Brilliant version of that. Bruce, Sir Paul, sharing the vocals, E Street Band getting involved, it's brilliant. And then, if that wasn't enough, they suddenly go into a great version of Twist and Shout. But the Hyde Park gigs, there is a very tight curfew. When it's time, it's time. And unbelievably, we had Bruce Springsteen, the E Street Band, one of the Beatles, Sir Paul McCartney, up there singing an amazing version of Twist and Shout. And the powers that be, the people behind the concert, they pulled the plug. All goes silent. Well, it goes silent, obviously they pulled out the outside speakers, so everything coming to the front of the stage, we couldn't hear a thing. All the speakers were out. But they'd obviously left the on-stage monitors on, because you can see Sir Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, still jamming away, still finishing the song, probably looking slightly confused while the crowd are starting to walk away 
and all looking confused because we couldn't hear. They cut the sound to us. They finished the song on stage, but as you can imagine, Bruce and the E Street Band weren't particularly pleased that their big finish to this big concert in London had been slightly ruined. And it kind of, it was a great gig and it was great seeing what we saw and hearing what we saw with the E Street Band and Sir Paul singing, but it did put a bit of a dampener on the end of the evening. It was an odd way to end it. Well, Bruce Springsteen being Bruce, uh, they had a few days off and then they had a concert in Dublin was their next gig and they like to react to things they're very clever they know a lot of songs they play a lot of different songs every concert they've probably thrown a few different cover songs well bear in mind the Hyde Park concert had been ended early due to the curfew and meant that we only got to hear half of Twist and Shout so when Bruce performed his next gig in Dublin he started the concert with Twist and Shout at the exact point that it was cut off and then from that they went straight into a cover of I Fought the Law and The Law Won. That is just genius, and that is why Springsteen and the E Street Band are the best in the business. This is an interview that I did with Sarah Parrish when I was working down in Yeovil. At the time, she happened to be with a former colleague of mine who may have been feeding her some information and trying to stitch me up a bit. Listen and see if you can work out how. Neil Quigley. Please welcome on the phone this morning, Yeovil's very own actress, Sarah Parrish. Morning, Sarah. Hi, Blue Eyes. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm just looking through, obviously, your career. You are born in Yeovil. We all know that. So yeah. it's uh, nice to have you back on the radio in this area. Thank you. Just looking through your bio. I know, obviously, know a lot about you. I know all the, you know, the most of the shows you're in. The one thing I didn't know, though, that you were one of the Boddington girls. I was. I was one of the, uh, the original Boddington's adverts. Do you remember? The first one was, it looked like it was face cream. Yes. The second one looked like a Cornetto advert. And the third one looked like a suntan lotion advert. And that was me. The catch line was, give us another rub down without chip fat. Who could forget that? <laughs> One quick question on that. Do you actually like beer? Do you drink beer? Am I... I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. You can, no, no, you can, because uh, well, Peter Kay advertised John Smith for years. He doesn't drink, he's teetotal, so if you don't, you can say that. Well, fine. I do. I mean, uh, yeah, I like a good drink like the rest of us, but Boddington's, I used to like Boddington's, but they got me to drink. I drank about 84 pints of Boddington's while I was recording that advert. It was wow, in Miami. What a job. I was on what a a, job. It was, I know, you'd have loved it, wouldn't you? Yes. I was on a beach. It was absolutely boiling hot. And the client insisted that I drink the real thing. They always do, because it has to look absolutely perfect. And we did. We must have done about 60 takes. I was absolutely plastered by the end of the filming. Were well, you purposely making mistakes by the end, thinking, yeah. oh, okay, let's get some more beer in. <laughs> you travel a lot. Staying in contact with people. Yeah. You know, it's difficult in this day and age. We're very busy people. It's, it's hard sometimes keeping in contact. Why do you think we still seem to lose touch with people that, you know, we should speak to more often? Then? Well, I think in this day and age, it's become increasingly harder to keep in touch with people because we're given so many other options aren't we you've got facebook you've got youtube you've got your computer you can email you can text we've sort of lost the art of conversation i like to talk to people i like to hear their voice i like to hear what they're up to i don't want to write to them i don't want to text them i want to hear them you had to bring three people this weekend say i mean who would you want to contact who would you really be calling oh well obviously first of all i'd be calling my mum thelma in yeovil well you could just say so hello is. save yourself a phone call now yeah hey, i know <laughs> <laughs> She'd definitely get one of the calls. I would probably use them to catch up with people that I haven't seen for a while. I mean, I went to Yeovil College, I did my A-levels at Yeovil College, and I had a great group of friends there. Since I've started my acting career, we've lost touch, as you do. You know, you meet other people, you move on, you get married, you have children. It would be nice to reconnect with people using those calls but if I don't do that you know I've got my cutting it girls that I'll speak to somebody like me if you get me on the phone you won't get me off I won't stop talking so you know it could be anybody could be anybody out there that I'll call I'm gonna grab a phone book and just start dialing <laughs> some numbers when you're a bit bored just to chat to people and... don't joke about it I probably would I'm a bit of a chatter you know once I get started I won't stop you obviously on TV at the moment as well in mistresses let's just talk about that quickly yeah in enjoyed that that was a good fun make it looks like an interesting show to uh, act in shall we say it was, it was terrific fun, actually. We filmed it down in Bristol. My brother lives in Bristol, so it was lovely to go back down there again. Three um, lovely girls to work with. A fantastic show. We've had the most amazing response from it. We never expected that it would go down this well. I've got great viewing figures, good reviews, so we're hoping for a second series. I was going to say, is that, you know, second series on the cards? It would be lovely to do it again. It really would. It was a lovely experience. We all got on very well, and, and, it, and it's a terrific show. So, yeah, I, I'd love to do it again. So we all need to write to the BBC and demand a second 
second series then, basically. Yeah, get on the phones now. I was going to ask you, Neil, actually, whether you were going to enter the Iron Man at Sherbourne. Not this year, I don't oh. think. I, it's, you know what? I can do it. I've watched it the last three years. <laughs> And I'm always amazed by the people that, you know, all sorts of shapes and sizes of, of people do it. And I'm impressed a bit, but I just can't do it. I mean, I'm a rubbish swimmer for starters. Yeah. And the two mile swim, starting at about six o'clock in freezing cold Sherbourne, Castle Lake, that's, that's not my idea of a good start to a Sunday morning. Not a good start to a Sunday morning. <laughs> Oh, sounds like a nightmare, I'm not surprised. Exactly, and it would take me the, the whole day to do the swims of rubbish. I could probably do the I could probably do the running. I oh, know I can I could run the marathon, but that's about it really. So But no, you're not doing it this year. Not this year. I'll I'll duck out. I, what I usually do is we try and find uh, a live FM listener to do it and I just sort of, you know, chat to them, support them and cheer them on. I I find that a lot more therapeutic for a lot easier for me as well. Yeah, fair enough. Well Sarah Paris, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. All the best with uh, everything you do. Thank you very much. And, of course, you know, next time you're close to the area, feel free to pop in if you're back in I'll pop in and we'll have a chat. Pop in and say hello, yeah, definitely. Neil Quigley. I love speaking to her and I think she's fantastic. Mind you, she never did pop in for that cuppa. What's the weirdest or strangest thing a famous person has done for you? Have they helped you out? Maybe have they pushed your car when it was stuck in a certain situation? Did they pick something up for you that you dropped maybe in the supermarket? Did they hold a door open for you? Which is fairly normal, but at the same time, if that say, I don't know, Sean Connery holding the door open for you, it's quite odd and quite memorable. This is my claim to fame on this score. I was working Again, at a radio station down in Somerset, we put on a big 70s and 80s concert, and one of the bands on the bill were The Real Thing, who I love. I think their songs are fantastic. Two of my favourite songs, You To Me Are Everything and Can't Get By Without You. They're great. Anyway, they were performing, and it was backstage. It was a bit showbiz. We had some bottles of beer backstage. I know, rock and roll, right? Problem was wasn't overly organised because we didn't have any bottle openers. So I was backstage with the real thing. They were tucking in some beers. I picked up a beer, was trying to work out how they'd open their beer and looking around when one of the members of the real thing very kindly opened my bottle of beer with his key ring and handed it to me. How cool is that? Yeah, that's cool. One of the real thing has opened a bottle of beer for me. It's brilliant to be fair. Neil Quigley. Do like to think I'm pretty good with animals. When I go around and see my sister, her dog always likes to leap and sit on my lap, likes to come and have a seat on my lap, nights a good cuddle, and I'm happy doing that. It's very relaxing. I think it's good for you, you know. They do say that stroking dogs is relaxing. It's nice, and it's nice to feel wanted when I walk into the house straight away. The dog comes over, and when I sit down, straight on the lap, it's there, bit of stroking, then falls asleep. That's fine. So I think I'm good with animals, with dogs and cats in general. I love them both. When I go and see my mate up in Liverpool, he has a cat, and it's a bit stereotypical, bear in mind where he is from, but his cat is called Lennon. He's a Beatles fan. He's a John Lennon fan. The cat's called Lennon. Although this cat is not quite as big on peace as the actual John Lennon was. He is a bit of a, an angry young man, you could say. This cat, who is very approachable, he will come and see you when you come in, but he literally does fly at you somewhat, and it's impressive how much air he can get. It's like he's been watching early tapes of Michael Jordan when he was at his basketball prime. In fact, my mate does link it too, and I've seen it in action myself. You know Kato in the Pink Panther, when he flies at Inspector Clouseau from all sorts of angles and tries to sort of uh, karate chop him, take him out. This cat is like Kato. When you walk into a room, this cat leaps so high, he can literally sort of leap up on your shoulders and start grabbing around your neck. He is frightening. So that is one animal I've not quite managed to tame yet, but it is quite a sight seeing him fly across the room, I have to say. It's very Kato-esque. My mate's got a ukulele. I really should learn the Pink Panther theme tune on the ukulele, and I could play it for him in real time when the cat attacks him next, maybe. That's it for this week's podcast. Thank you for listening. One of you learned, well, one of the members of The Real Thing once opened a bottle of beer for me. I don't mind dancing live on television to Little Mix. And also, Sarah Parrish thinks I've got lovely blue eyes, even though technically she's not met me in person, thanks to a friend of mine that she was with during the interview I did. That is it, as I said, for this week. Take care, have fun, and be nice to each other. See you next week. Bye.